Hey guys, it's Merce. Welcome back to Harpies in the Trees, where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. On my Instagram account, I reached 1,000 followers and I wanted to do something kind of special. So I'm giving away this uh, vintage 1980s Clive Barker book. It's called Cabal. Um, it's very cool. It even has the original receipt for whoever bought it in 1992. Um, so if you'd like to get on that, it's still going on until Thursday. It's going to go until midnight or 6 a.m. if you're in Europe. Um, so it is an international giveaway. And I'm also doing something special. If you have a favorite supernatural character or monster entity of some sort, I'm also going to do a digitally painted bookmark for you as well. So if you like vintage books and you want to get a cool custom bookmark, you can hop over to my Instagram account and enter. All of the details are there, but if you have any questions, just let me know. So the two books that I'm going to be reviewing today are Who's There by Demas Rio, which is an ARC request, and Walk the Darkness Down by John Bowden. Who's There is a collection of five short stories. They are Indonesian horror, and they are about communing with the dead, vengeance, murder, shape-shifting spirits, and domestic violence. So even though these stories are taking place in modern-day Indonesia and in modern society, there is something ancient and old that seems to pop up in, in a lot of these stories. My favorite reads out of the five were Who's There and The Wandering. So Who's There is about a guy who's spending time with his best friend and his best friend's wife at a bar. They're also waiting for his fiance, who seems to be running late. But right away, it's really obvious that something is wrong, that something is not right with this guy. He's agitated, he's cagey, and he's not able to relax. We jump back and forth between two timelines. One is the present and one is the past. And as we are kind of going back between the past and the present, in the present, he's becoming more frenetic and more distracted. So early on in the story, I got an idea of what I thought the problem was. Because of his strange behavior and the reaction from his friends and just his mindset and just sort of, you know, the, the few flashbacks that we're kind of getting, I was like, okay, I think I know what's going on here. But even though I kind of figured it out, it didn't take away from the creepiness. It actually made it creepier because now you're just kind of waiting and the tension is building. And so that was really fun. And when the confirmation comes, it's sort of tense and chilling. The ending had a really nice visual component to it and that in itself added some mood and atmosphere that I was kind of waiting for and just that one scene alone was just really, really cool and creepy and I really enjoyed it. Now the next story I feel like is really the main star of this whole entire collection. Um, it's called The Wandering. It is a bit of a slow burn as we get to know Badrun, who's our main character. He's a security guard in a corporate office building. He has a wife, a new wife, and a new baby. Um, and he also has a serious hard-on for one of the women who work in the office. But one night after everyone is gone and, and Bedroon is there to do his security rounds uh, around the building, he is forced to confront a secret that he long forgot. And by forgot, I mean he didn't just forget. He has some military grade amnesia, but there is something that won't let him leave until he does. I love this one. It's moody, it's atmospheric, it's slow to start, but I kind of liked that. So we get to spend time with Bedroon to kind of get to know who this guy is. And he's probably a guy that all of us know one or two of them, you know? Kind of like a guy's guy, womanizer, you know? He has a really hard time not staring at women uncomfortably. <laughs> but he has a family, he has a young family, and he's actually very in love with his wife, even though I think for him to admit it to himself might be kind of hard. So we get to know Bedroon, we get to know what his job is, we get to know where he works, and then we get to find out a lot more about Bedroon. So like I said, there's a lot of atmosphere and there's a lot of mood. And I really enjoy the way that Rio 
um, reveals the supernatural. It's very effective. Visually, it's just perfect, I think, for me. It's very cool. Um, all of this is taking place in a closed down for the day uh, office building, um, which is, you know, not just one floor, but many floors. And uh, there's something really eerie about this. I really enjoyed the process of finding out, you know, what what it is, you know, what what the secret is. So it has this really cool mystery, and then it has this other component of the supernatural, which comes in a very uh, forceful manner. <laughs> So these were the two standouts for me in this collection. These really inspired me to go back to my like Asian horror uh, PC games <laughs> because there's something about The Wandering that kind of just gave me that spooky feeling um, that reminded me of games like Home Sweet Home and Detention and, and things like that. So that was fun because that, that inspired me to go back and, and be like, you know what, I when my PC is fixed, <laughs> I'm gonna you know, play some, some of these games. Some of them I didn't finish because they're just too creepy. So all in all, I gave this three and a half stars out of five. And I want to thank Demas Rio. Thank you so much for sending this over to me and allowing me to review it. Walk the Darkness Down begins in 1866, somewhere in the United States. And there's a young boy, he's talking to his grandfather and he's asking him, will I inherit this land? Will the farm be mine? And the grandfather, doesn't seem to be very certain of that because it's not a choice. A few years go by and the young boy is a little older and he finds himself taken over by a dark providence and he has a journey to make now. And while this is happening, there's a guy named Keaton who is a man who's on the run trying to avoid confrontation with a very specific individual. And then there's Jones who's scouring the world for the man who killed his mother and burned her house down. But while he's looking for this other guy, he meets a, an older man who is very fatherly to him. And it's a relationship that really changes Jones in a way. And then he meets a young boy named Jubal who is very proudly taking care of his two little sisters who are so small they fit into a sling that wraps around his body. So these characters are being corralled onto a very specific path and this is when the story really begins. Walk the Darkness Down is lyrical, beautiful prose. It almost reads like a fable or an allegory. It, it just has this kind of uh, very specific feeling to it, a lot of depth and it uses a lot of different inspirations and it really carves this bone illumination. It's just a really amazing, touching, disgusting, gross, um, <laughs> visually um, shocking and beautiful story. The first book I read by John Bowden was Out Behind the Barn, which was a collaboration with Chad Lutzk. I really enjoyed that book. I thought that it was beautiful and tragic and sad and just like Walk the Darkness Down, it has this lyrical quality. It's very beautiful. It's kind of intimate. I even cried a little bit when I read it and, and I also got something in my eye reading Walk the Darkness Down as well. It's definitely darker and more violent and more blood filled and even though it's a book of, you know, blood and death and darkness and destruction. Um, it has these really amazing characters that are very endearing uh, and very um, palpable, just very, you know, just lifelike. Bowdoin cares about his characters and that is something that I really like in my stories because when we become uh, attached to characters, then we start to fear for them. You know, we, we, start to, we start to have empathy for them and that makes all of the risk and consequence in the story much more hard to bear. That's what I really like about books that have this like lyrical quality, um, but are also pulling from a lot of archetypes or folklore or mythologies or whatever kind of things that we, you know, have stood the test of time. You know, they keep inspiring. There is a really cool quote in here that I wanted to read because I just found it to be, it just, 
it just got to me. I really, really liked it. So in this scene, Keaton and Jubal are looking at a dead animal together. And Jubal is like, I don't really understand time. So Keaton uses this dead animal as a metaphor for time. The dead thing is a day, and them flies are hours. Hours eat the day. The maggots wriggling and swarming in there, and the ants fighting for their tiny claim. That'd be minutes and seconds. They eat up the hours regardless of how many of any of them minutes, seconds, and hours there are. At the end of it all, the days that stitch into months and on into years, at the end of it all is just a pile of bones and dusty bits of hide. I love that quote. I just thought it was like, just thinking of time as a carcass and the breakdown of the carcass uh, through the insects was just, I don't know, it was very, um, visceral i think it's really cool so it's super short i think it's like 160 pages altogether the chapters are one or two pages i think the longest chapter was three pages so it's really quick to read though i don't think you want to read it fast it's one of those type of books where you kind of want to digest what you just read because it has this component of it has its own pace it's like a film so this was a beautiful read. I, I guess I'm beginning to know and understand now um, John Bowden's uh, uh, just natural propensity for lyrical writing. So using my book score, this was 93 points for me out of 114, which is a four and a half star read. So those were my two reviews for Who's There and Walk the Darkness Down. Thank you so much for spending your free time with me. I appreciate it very much. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit that bell if you want to get some notifications. And if you're on Instagram, you can follow me at Harpies in the Trees. I hope you have a wonderful week coming up and I will talk to you next time.